In this video, we're going to cover MS-DOS emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. I'm not going to lie, DOSBox Pure has been one of my absolute favorite ways to experience DOS games in the last year. I have a number of retro PCs that I use to do DOS stuff, just because DOS emulation hasn't always been the most straightforward process, but ever since DOSBox Pure hit the scene, I've found myself increasingly using it, and it's been awesome. And thanks to its simplicity and use, using it on a console like the Xbox Series X and S is also pretty freaking awesome. Now, while the Xbox Series X and S consoles themselves can use mouse and keyboard input, for whatever reason, the RetroArch build for Xbox Series X and S only supports keyboards at this moment. So for any number of keyboard-only DOS games, that's perfectly awesome. But for games that did need a mouse input, DOSBox Pure has a number of different controller options available to let you play through any number of DOS games just with a controller, and that's one of the things that I absolutely love about it. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the setup process so you can play your MS-DOS games on your own Xbox Series X and S. Let's go ahead and dive in. To get started with MS-DOS emulation on the Xbox Series X and S, you need to install RetroArch either in dev mode or retail mode. Doesn't really matter either way. And optionally, you can move your system folders and stuff over to a USB drive. Link to all of these will be in the description, this whole playlist. So get RetroArch set up, then come back and follow along with this tutorial. The next thing we're going to need is to source some MS-DOS games. These come in a wide variety of formats, including floppy disk images or CD-ROM images. If you happen to have a physical collection of CD-ROM-based MS-DOS games, you can use my How to Dump CD-based games with the PC version of RetroArch Guide for instructions on dumping those. It's worked for the ones I've tried, but results may vary since it's not technically meant for MS-DOS games, but hey, the option's there. Or alternatively, you can always resort to the shady part of the internet to find them. I really don't care which way you do it, but don't ask me for illegal download links because none will be provided. But once you have your MS-DOS game sourced, you do need to convert them into a zip format. So I am going to let the older version of my MS-DOS guide for Xbox Series X and S take the reins from here to show you how to do that. But there is some prep work we need to do with our games once we have them. So as you can see, I have a bunch of different DOS games in here. Most of them are ISO, got a couple BinQ, and I even have a floppy disk image here. But I basically need to make a zip file containing all of the different games. So for example, Command and Conquer here, there's two disks in it. I'm going to select both disks. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to send them to a compressed zip folder. So this is something you could do in Windows without any additional downloads. Send them to a compressed disk folder. And then you could just name it like Command and Conquer or whatever the frick you want to name your games. But just, there we go. And then I could delete the original files after I have that completed. And I'm going to do that same process with all of my ISO games. And again, for multi-disc games, you want to select every game that is in there and add them all to a single zip file. And then we're going to do the same thing with bin Q games. You're going to select the bin file and the Q file and send them to a zip folder. And then finally, I'm going to do it for my floppy disk image as well. And then for my Warcraft 2 image as well, but I'm going to do a little something different for Warcraft 2 because the disk that appears first is the one that gets mounted first in DOSBox Pure. So I do not want Beyond the Dark Portal to get mounted first, so I'm just going to add in a little number here to both of these disk images. There 
There we go. And now Warcraft 2 shows up first. Warcraft 2 Beyond the Dark Portal shows up second. And then I'm just going to add them both to a single zip file once again. And I'm just going to fix the name here real quick on this one. There we go. Now the last type of games I have are just some installed floppy disk games. So they're already installed, but they're just in a bunch of different files. So I'm going to select every file in the directory, so you can do it like I did, or just hit Control A, and we're going to add these files to a zip. And I'm going to rename this zip Metal Gear, because this is Metal Gear. And I'm going to move this out of this folder into the main directory of my DOS games. There we go. And then I can get rid of that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for King's Quest V. And finally, for Seven Cities of Gold. And I want Command and Conquer Red Alert to have the Command and Conquer Red Alert tag on it as well. Alright, thank you, January Me, for showing us how to do that process. Now, once you have your DOS games converted over to zip format and ready to go, we just need to place them onto our preferred storage medium. With the newest versions of RetroArch, we can run DOS games off of USB now as long as you have them in that NTFS format with the security settings applied. So in my case, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my DOS games, open up my USB drive that I have plugged into my computer, open up the games folder, drag the DOS games right on in, and let it do its thing. Now, if you are relying on an S drive install in dev mode, you can open up Durango FTP, start the file share, Using your preferred FTP method, access that FTP file share. Head into your S drive, program files, Windows apps, RetroArch folder with the x64 at the end, the games folder that you created, and drag the games on in and let it do its thing. Now, one more optional thing we could download is a general MIDI sound font. These aren't required. DOSBox Pure has basic sound blaster and MIDI implementations so you can fully play through everything you want with just those. But if you want to have a slightly better sound, you can download any general MIDI sound font available on the net. I like to head over to Phil's computer lab just because Phil loves DOS stuff and I really enjoy his content on DOS related stuff. And these are some of the ones he recommends. So I take those to heart and I've really enjoyed them myself. So in this example, I'm going to use the Weeds GM4 updated sound font here. So I'm just going to tell it to download. And as always, links will be in the description below for all this stuff. But sound font files are basically equivalent to BIOS files, so they need to go into our RetroArch system folder. So if you moved your system folder to USB, just access your USB drive once again, open up the system folder, and drag the sound font file right in. Or if you are still using the Q drive, again, access your Xbox FTP file share, local folder, RetroArch folder, local state folder, system folder, and drag it right on in. I already had it, so I'm just going to tell it to overwrite. And again, you could place as many MIDI sound font files as you want. I'm just using one for my example here today. But once you have your games placed, and optionally with this sound font placed, we're ready to move over to the Xbox. And over on your Xbox, go ahead and get booted into RetroArch. And now that RetroArch is loaded, we are going to make a games playlist for our MS-DOS content. So doing this, just go down to Import Content, and head to Manual Scan. From here, navigate to the directory that you stored your DOS games. So if you're on USB, under Dev Mode, it'll be under E. USB under Retail Mode, it'll be under D. And then if you placed them on the internal SSD, follow that S drive path. But for my example, I am in Dev Mode using USB, so I'm going to head to E, Games. I'm going to find my DOS games folder, and I'm going to tell it to scan this directory. Now for System Name, I'm going to head down to the DOS section here and choose DOS. Default core, same thing, I'm going to go down to I see, till I see DOS, and I'm going to choose DOSBox Pure. Make sure scan recursively is left on if you are using your games within subfolders. Do not turn scan inside archives on, we want just the zip files. And once this is all set, tell it to start the scan. And now we will have a nice new DOS playlist here on the left with all of our MS-DOS games right here. And now from here, we can begin loading into our MS-DOS content and getting it installed. So each game will be installed like it would on a real computer, and it saves that into your RetroArch save folder. So let's just go ahead and load up Command & Conquer for an example. We're going to tell it to run. And it may take it a while, but it will eventually load you up into the DOSBox Pure start menu. 
and there are a number of different options you can see when you load up an MS-DOS game. The first options are to unmount different disk images, so say I wanted to play the NOD disk image, I could tell it to mount and unmount the GDI image, mount the .NOD image, but it also gives us all of the different .exe files that we can run. So we need to install Command & Conquer to be able to play it, so just press A on the install.exe. This is going to be different depending on the game. Duke Nukem 3D in particular is a bit different because you have to like run some really nested install file to get it to actually work. But run the install program and then just install it like you would on an MS-DOS system. If you happen to have a keyboard connected to your Xbox, it will work under DOSBox Pure like I said. Or alternatively, you might need to go into your... RetroArch quick menu here and go down to controls and under port one controls we could choose a number of different options here so it's set to a Gravis gamepad by default that's great for a number of things but for installing games setting it to mouse with left analog stick is my preferred just makes things a lot easier d-pad are the keyboard uh, arrows then you have right and left mouse button ass assigned to a and b Middle mouse button, space, escape, enter, shift, control, just tons of different options here. But for installing games, this is definitely my preferred on Xbox. And now I can move the cursor around just like I could on a computer. Now I kind of have to restart the whole process because I need to select a sound card and all that, so we're just going to restart it real quick. MS-DOS had a bunch of different types of sound devices available, so under DOSBox Pure, you can hit the Auto Detect option most of the time, and it should pick up the right type of sound card. And then you can test the sound in a number of games to make sure it's working. Center. Hey, and if it's working, you can go ahead and hit Accept. and then just proceed with the installation. And then just press yes for directory listings and all that. It really doesn't matter a whole lot under DOSBox Pure. And then just wait for your game to install. And once that installation process has finished, your game will either auto start or you'll just be taken back to that DOSBox Pure menu where you could choose the executable. But either way, you are now able to play your MS-DOS games. And again, depending on the game, you're going to want to change up those controls under the Controls tab. So that left analog stick equals mouse cursor input option is great for real-time strategy games like Command & Conquer. Gives you a number of different uh, hotkeys to work with. And, you know, you can just really enjoy the game. But let's talk about those multi-disc options real quick, because if I try to load up a Brotherhood of Nod game, some games will let you play through the first mission. So, for example, here I just am finishing up the first mission of the Brotherhood of Nod missions, even though I'm on the GDI disc. But once I get to the second mission, it's asking me to insert the Nod disc into the drive. So from here I could go down to Disc Control, eject the disc, change the disk over to our NOD disk, and then insert the disk. And now when I press OK, it will load me into disk 2, just like that. And now I can continue on with my Brotherhood of NOD content. Or alternatively, from the DOSBox Pure menu, if we just want to load directly into a second disk, we can unmount the current disk and mount the other one back up. And then just start up the game. And then from there, you can load up into whatever you want. All right, let's go over another game here real quick, and that is Mega Man X for MS-DOS, the worst version of this game to ever exist. It had a number of input device support, so by default, it expected you to use the Capcom controller that came with the game, but you could also choose between keyboards or other types of joysticks. So again, if you have a physical keyboard hooked up to your Xbox Series X and S, and for example, I have one hooked up right now. You could press the scroll lock key on it to make it so that the keyboard is only sending commands to the core and not to the RetroArch front end so you don't accidentally like go to the quick menu or something. 
but like you can set your input de input device to a keyboard, and then you can accept the installation. Select your MIDI drivers, so we'll go with Sound Blaster 16. Digital Audio, Sound Blaster 16 or AWE 32, attempt to configure driver automatically, detected successfully, and then we can tell it to be done. And then that the installation's finished, we can tell it to go into the game. And now from here, I'm using my physical keyboard to play this. So I'm going to go down to options. And I'm going to change the controls up a bit here because they're just really bad. So we'll do shot is D, jump is S, dash is A, I guess. Yeah, tab works for that. And menu, sure, we'll, we'll go with that. But now we can just begin playing the game with our keyboard. And again, I can't stress enough how terrible this version of Mega Man X is. Like, it's so bad. It looks like this even on a real MS-DOS computer. Like, it's so gross. Another cool thing about DOSBox Pure, it does have a virtual keyboard as well by clicking down your left analog stick. Like, it's really handy. And real quick, going back into the controls tab, if we go down to port one controls, you can set different types of like generic bindings to your different buttons if you want to. So if you have a game that only supports keyboard input, but you want to use a controller, you can, you can do that. You can come in here, generic keyboard bindings and set them up. I can't stress enough how important this controls tab is going to be for you for various different DOS games but you could even do custom keyboard and mouse on left stick controls. Again, the controls tab is going to be your best friend in getting a lot of different games set up on Xbox Series X and S, specifically because we don't get mouse input. All right, let's do a quick example of a game that can use a controller. And for this one, I think I'm gonna try out the Thrustmaster Flight Stick. Gives us three axes, four buttons, and one hat. So with my keyboard hooked up for MDK2, or MDK here, I'm going to go to my joystick setup screen, enable it, and this is a three axis joystick, and look at that, I can now move around my joystick. There's my Z axis, X, Y, so there's my buttons, don't know how to enter this calibrate menu though, so whatever, we're going to, just going to go with it for now, and there we go, I am now controlling MDK with my controller. And there we go. I am able to control the game completely with all of my controller's buttons. Again, this is another game that works perfectly well with a keyboard though. So, I mean, just play through them how you see fit. That's kind of the great thing about all this. And now just as a heads up, some games still have sensitive scrolling along the edge of screen. So you will kind of have to get used to how to navigate them really just depends on the game it's not as bad as it used to be it used to be completely uncontrollable so hopefully in a few more updates we'll just not even have to worry about this anymore on a controller for the xbox but now let's go ahead and talk about some of the advanced core options available within dosbox pure we're actually not going to be messing with a whole lot of them but let's go over them anyway so going into our retro art quick menu scroll down to options our first option is to enable save state support, so you can choose whether or not you want them enabled. There's also save states with rewind support. Do note that if you change any of your machine settings, you will not be able to load a save state for that machine anymore, so do be aware of that. Next, input options. Bind unused buttons is on by default. This will just assign random keyboard buttons to any controller buttons you're not using. You can change them in the controls section. Next, enable the on-screen keyboard. That's with our left analog click. You can turn that on and off here. Next is binding a mouse wheel to keyboards buttons. That's not really important for us because we can't use a mouse anyway. Mouse sensitivity. You can set how fast your mouse moves within DOSBox. Then you can set a horizontal mouse sensitivity. You can ignore use mouse input. Automatic gamepad mappings. So there are some games that will automatically map your buttons on a controller for Xbox Series X and S. I've never really come across these myself, but results may vary. I don't have the most DOS games. 
Then you could choose a keyboard layout depending on your region. And then we have joystick analog dead zone percentages that we could set here. 15% is good, but you want to leave this set to at least 5, otherwise your joystick will drift within DOS games and that's annoying. Alright, backing out of the input options tab, into the performance options tab. Emulated performance, this is set to auto by default. It will basically just emulate what the game requires. It's honestly the best possible option to have, but you can manually set a different type of machine here. Next, video options. Our SVGA mode is set to S3 Trio 64 by default. This is the most compatible video card for DOS games. There are a couple of different options to choose from though. And if you have flickering in some games, you could try the S3 Trio with no line buffer. For the most part though, you'll just leave this on S3 Trio 64. Next up, emulated graphics chip. This is set to SVGA by default, and that's the highest it can go. But if you want to emulate some older stuff, you could go back down to VGA, EGA, CGA, Tandy, Hercules, or even PC Jr. Next up, aspect ratio correction. You could turn this on or off. I like it off personally, but hey, try it for yourself. Next up, system options. You could choose your memory size here. It's set to 16 megabytes by default, and that's great for most games. But if you have a more late era DOS game, you can set it a little bit higher if needed. Do note that the higher memory values you go up to, the more unstable DOS box can get. So be careful with that. Or if you're going with even older games, you can set it lower or disable extended RAM entirely. CPU type, leave this on auto for the best possible performance, but you can set it to different types of 386, 486, or Pentium instruction sets. CPU core, this is set to auto by default. I recommend leaving it there. And then we have start menu options for DOSBox Pure. I just recommend leaving this how it is. And finally, audio options. You can choose our audio sampling rate. Sound Blaster settings. Next up, MIDI output. So this is where you could choose that general MIDI sound font that you loaded into your RetroArch system folder. Next, Sound Blaster type. I recommend leaving this on Sound Blaster 16 for best compatibility, but again, you have all the different options available to you here. Sound Blaster AdLib FM mode. So you can choose between different settings here. So I mean, you can use a bunch of different stuff. Sound Blaster AdLib provider. If you want better quality, you could go with the nuked OPL3. And then you can also enable a Gravis ultrasound if you so choose. This does require a little bit of extra setup for certain games, so I just recommend leaving it off if you just want to have a plug and play setup like I do. But that pretty much does it as far as core options within DOSBox Pure are concerned. If there are certain settings you want to have set for some games but not others, like CPU and system types, you can go up to Manage Core Options and save them as a Game Options file. But that's going to do it as far as MS-DOS is concerned within RetroArch. DOSBox Pure really makes MS-DOS gaming a lot more accessible and easy to do, and I just absolutely love it. And the ability to be able to play through a number of games just with a controller, even if they needed a mouse and keyboard, is pretty fantastic. Again, you will need to configure controls on a game-by-game -game basis to really get the best feel possible out of them. Since I like playing a lot of turn-based strategy and RTS game and real-time strategy games, most of mine can actually be set to mouse on left analog stick, and it's been pretty friggin' awesome. And then combine that with a real keyboard hooked up to your Xbox, and you have a fairly decent setup for being able to do a lot of stuff. Like, it's really cool. I hope some point in the future, RetroArch on Xbox Series X and S will support proper mouse input because that will just make the DOSBox Pure Core even better, and man, that'd just be so cool. But as always, if you happen to have any questions on getting DOSBox Pure set up on your Xbox Series X or S, ask in the comment section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button so you can see when new videos like this go live on the channel. Content is continuously updated, so there's lots to see. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping this place going, and we're super grateful to every single one of you for that. Big shout out to all of our current champions who believe in what we do here and have just been so supportive. Thank you all so very much. But that's going to do it for this one, so until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, and we will see you back next video.